Welcome to the MSU Deer Labs online seminar series brought to you by Mississippi State University Extension Service and the Forest and Wildlife Research Center. My name is Steve Damaris and I'm the Taylor Chair in Applied Big Game Research and Instruction at Mississippi State University. Thanks for joining me. Our results from the site preparation project in the lower coastal plain may not apply exactly in other soil resource regions, particularly ones with greater quality soil that would promote higher quality woody vegetation. However, one thing is for sure, once that canopy closes and sunlight no longer reaches the ground, you will have a de decreasing supply of deer forage. That's guaranteed regardless of the soil resource region. That first thinning opportunity somewhere between 13 and 15 years of age, depending upon the soil resource region, is a great opportunity to get light back down onto the floor of the, of the forest. However, you're gonna have litter that's limiting seed germination, and you may have mid-story hardwoods that have come up underneath the pines that will shade out the potential forage. And so that there's a potential problem associated with that thinning opportunity. However, we'll talk more about that in a minute. Provided you don't have a hardwood mid-story problem, if you thin and, in this particular case, do some prescribed burning, then you could have some really great nutritional carrying capacity for your deer population based on the amount that you thin. Basal area, or BA, is the reference to the, the volume of the stand and the higher the number, the more wood you have on your timber stand. So if you remove more timber from your stand, you open up more canopy. This is a graph showing differing rates of thinning. 110 basal area is an unthinned stand. 90 basal area is a, is a very light thin. 70 basal area is a little bit heavier thinning than most commercial forestry operations would go. They, they tend to do anywhere from 75 to, to 85 basal area in a, a first thin operation. And then 50 basal area is probably beyond the level of thinning that most commercial operations and, and most consulting foresters would advise you to thin to. However, if you are interested in wildlife as a primary product of your timber stand, you may want to consider thinning more heavily to reduce the basal area because this graph shows a stand thin to 50 basal area can produce 200 deer days of carrying capacity per acre. That's a lot of forage for your deer population. Thinning to 70 basal area, which is a sometimes occurs in a commercial setting, but it's on the kind of the heavy end of, of normal. You'll get about 175 deer days. So a well-managed stand that's thinned reasonably heavily and burned can really produce some good forage. 90 basal area, that's you're down to 125 deer days and about 75 deer days on that unthinned stand that has actually been burned. So the sunlight not getting to the ground is limiting the forage production success that you would like to have. But combine that thin where you can make some money on your pulp wood if there's a market for it. With a fire, you can really do some great work to improve your carrying capacity for your deer population. Now let's get back to that mid-story hardwood canopy problem that I mentioned earlier. This is a loblolly pine stand with a pretty extreme mid-story hardwood problem that's predominantly sweet gum and sweet gum in the mid-story is competing with your pine trees. For every unit of volume that you have in sweet gum, it's probably reducing the equivalent volume of production in your pine trees, according to a well-known forester that's helped me understand this relationship better. So the hardwood mid-story is a problem for your pines, and it's also a real serious problem for your deer forage production and also many game and non-game birds that do not do well in that type of forested habitat. 
If you have sweet gum or other undesirable hardwoods in your pine stand, you cannot remove them with prescribed fire. They are too large to, to kill out. If you have hardwoods with maybe an inch diameter, you can probably kill them with a prescribed fire, but larger than an inch diameter, they are just going to either re-sprout if you do top kill them or not even be top killed with a fire. So the, if you're stuck with a lot of mid-story hardwoods, the best option in a pine management situation that I'm aware of, and again, I'm not a consulting forester, I cannot make specific timber management recommendations for your property. I'm speaking here from a standpoint of a wildlife biologist and talking about a wildlife friendly mid-rotation habitat management alternative using the selective herbicide called amazapir and prescribed fire can be a great combination. After thinning, amazapir can be applied in a variety of methods. It is safe to apply over the top of pine trees. You can apply it underneath the pine trees with a skitter, which is the top right hand photo, or a farm tractor on the lower left hand side, or even a, a four wheeler. And so you can spray this Amazapir herbicide, typically you would apply it during summer or even into early October. We applied some in early October on some of our study sites and it killed the sweet gum and other mid-story hardwoods very effectively. This shows some sweet gum leaves that have had an effective killing rate of herbicide applied to it. Just a, a spattering on the leaves will kill that tree very effectively. This photo shows hardwood mortality. The mazapir tends to have some soil activity for up to four to six months. So you're not gonna get a lot of growth from anything other than the pine trees for those four to six months period. But once that happens, you can have, you have some dead vegetation and you have the leaf litter. You can then apply prescribed fire. And this prescribed fire will clean the, the leaf litter off of your from the ground, it'll burn very effectively. And also it'll burn up the, the dead stems from the mid-story hardwoods. And that stimulation of germination is, is a really positive thing. So fire return interval is something we refer to as the frequency at which you bring a fire back into the stand. And the type of forages or herbaceous vegetation that you promote with fire is dependent upon the fire return interval. If you bring a fire back into your stand every year or every other year, you will promote grasses. And so this type of a fire return interval is more ideal for something like the bobwhite quail, also known as the northern bobwhite, and grassland birds. It's not necessarily conducive to forbs or browse production, a fire return interval of three to four years or even up to five years can be excellent for forb and browse production. This photograph shows a pine stand that received a mazapir treatment followed by prescribed fire and this is the second growing season after the fire. You see essentially no mid-story hardwoods in the stand. All you can see growing are herbaceous forbs and you can see if you look at that far right hand tree at the front you can see a, a woody vine growing up the side of it so these are good deer foods being produced following uh, this amazapir and fire treatment in the grow second growing season this is the fourth growing season and there's been a second burn applied to it in the third year so this is more frequently than most landowners would burn, but it's a good example of what you can do with a three-year burn rotation in terms of producing some really good forage for your deer population. And this would also be very successful for turkey, and you would potentially have some quail in, in your stands also, although it's getting a little bit rough on the ground for quail coveys, young chicks to be able to walk. So they really need less cover on the ground. In this particular stand, this is three-year rotation, would be ideal for deer and turkey. Great habitat management. So those 
demonstration plots I just showed you look really, really great. We wanted to test this on some larger scale applications. And so we set up a study looking in the upper coastal plain and also the lower coastal plain. We had six stands in the lower coastal plain and five stands up in the upper coastal plain. The upper coastal plain mid-story hardwood was dominated by sweet gum. The dominant mid-story hardwood in the lower coastal plain was Chinese privet. And both of those hardwoods are killed effectively using a mazapir. We set this up as a controlled study. We, within a stand, we burned half of it after treating with herbicides. And then we left the other half untreated as a comparison. And we wanted to look at the wildlife response to these 20 acre treatments. This photograph shows an untreated stand in the lower coastal plain, which shows a lot of shrubby growth in the mid story and down, still down lower within reach of the deer, but you don't see much foraging activity on this, these shrubby plants because it's not well eaten by the deer. It's a little bit too waxy. They can eat it, but it's not a preferred forage. This photograph shows two years after the arsenal and fire treatment. We see we've removed the mid-story canopy, the, the hardwoods that are competing for light with the ground layer. And now we have a species-rich and nutrient-rich ground cover that's really beneficial for deer and turkeys. So looking at these pictures side by side, which do you think produces the best deer forage? Well, I just gave you that answer because I said that the one on the left provides rich, abundant nutrients for deer. But also ask the second question, which one of these stands would you rather hunt deer in? Would you rather not see deer walking through the stand except for a quick little glimpse down a row? Or would you like to see that deer walking through a basically a supplemental foraging area? Because this area is now as rich in foods as any deer would want. And the deer, we've actually noticed anecdotally that deer become more visible earlier in the afternoon foraging in these type of stands because you can see them and it's also food, so they start feeding earlier. And if you are hunting in a food plot near this stand, they might not get out to the food plot until after dark, but they're walking around in this stand on the left earlier than dark because they feel a sense of security because there are trees around them and there's abundant food supply. So the best hunting condition in my book is on the left, not on the right. And we're having some really significant impacts on the nutritional carrying capacity in this set of stands. The untreated stands produced on average 10 deer days per acre of carrying capacity. The treated stand produced about 90 days of deer carrying capacity per acre. So you can have 90 deer for one acre on for one day on one acre, or you can have one deer for 90 days on an acre. So that's a pretty good nutritional carrying capacity for that stand following our treatment with amazapir and fire. This graph shows the upper coastal plain compared to the lower coastal plain. We see two different things here. Uh, start out comparing the control in the upper coastal plain to the amazapir or arsenal, which was the brand name and the fire, we see a threefold increase in nutritional carrying capacity after we remove the undesirable hardwoods from the mid-story. We go from 30 deer days per acre up to 85, almost 90 deer days per acre, threefold increase. Now compare the control, the untreated upper coastal plain with the untreated lower coastal plain you're going to see the upper coastal plain has about three times as many deer days per acre. That's related to the soil quality is greater in the upper coastal plain. And so the upper coastal plain naturally provides more deer forage than the lower coastal plain. 
but look at the level of habitat quality we've produced using the arsenal or amazapir treatment followed by a prescribed burn. We've essentially produced habitat in the lower coastal plain that is every bit as good than the habitat in the upper coastal plain. 90 deer days versus 85 deer days. So the point is we produced using amazapir and fire high quality forage in the lower coastal plain that you also can do to produce a better habitat for your deer population. This photograph shows a 25 year pine stand that has been thinned actually twice by this private non-industrial landowner. It's been burned. It has no mid-story hardwoods and it is a beautiful stand. It's producing some really great timber. This particular landowner is one of those that is not trying to maximize his economic return from timber. He wants wildlife benefits while also getting eventually income from his timber. So he's had two commercial thins in this stand. So he's gotten some money and he's got some really great deer habitat and turkey habitat in his pine stands. 